Thank you for joining us. This is a webinar called Say Hello to Microsoft Teams. My name is Sarah, a training specialist here with Microsoft. And in this webinar, we're going to explore the benefits of Microsoft Teams. We're going to walk through some different real world scenarios. Let's see Teams in action. And the key benefits that we'll be focusing on is communication, ways that you can be more engaging, contextual, relevant when you're communicating with people inside your network, your colleagues, your collaborators, maybe people outside your network like clients or partners. And you can save time when you're collaborating. Persistent chat history means that you can pick up the conversation right where you left off. It means you don't have to be online at the same time as everybody else in the conversation. It's a great way to extend your resources. And Teams is truly a collaborative tool. You can manage robust projects, ongoing initiatives, your daily operations, giving people visibility to the information, centralized files and resources all from one space. So let's begin by addressing this key question, why would we use something like Teams? And it comes down to what are we doing on a day-to-day -day basis in, at our jobs, right? We're communicating with people all the time. It could be a client call. It could be a quick call to a, to a colleague. Hey, got a sec. Maybe a hallway conversation. Maybe those weekly stand-ups or weekly huddles or something a little bit more formal, like an all hands or an address to the group. And you're connecting so that you can collaborate on some larger process. It's a project, you're planning an event, you're rolling out a product, you're developing features or, or promoting services. And it's an always this iterative process approach to uh, the next thing, always moving you forward. So as you're working all the time towards these main goals, Teams becomes the hub that lets you do your work. It's the hub of communication and collaboration. Teams is part of Microsoft 365, and it gives you access to all your stuff. So you can manage your contacts. You can manage people inside or outside your network, give them a quick chat, instant message, call them up, share your audio, share your screen, put a meeting on the calendar or a meeting series on the calendar, access files that are stored in the cloud. These files could live in SharePoint, OneDrive for business. You could also use third-party cloud storage providers if that's what your organization needs. And you have easy access to these files that are shared, have version history turned on, et cetera. And then, of course, you've got collaboration tools. You can bring together people for visibility and have access to an ongoing project. Maybe it's a department. Maybe it's a process, a work group. Give them alignment. And they have large visibility of these work streams that are coming together, but they also have a place to focus on a specific role or stage of that process or project. We call those teams and channels. You also have access to your favorite resources, services, tools right from teams. So it's part of Microsoft 365. Maybe these are Microsoft or Office apps like Planner, Word, OneNote, Power BI, you can get to those right from Teams. Or maybe these are Power Apps, uh, Power Automate Flow that you or your, your organization has created to help streamline different workflows. Or maybe it's a third-party app. There are hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of third-party apps. And if your organization is using features like ADP, Jira Cloud, Salesforce, YouTube, for example, you can easily access those, inf those features right from Teams. From the IT perspective, at the administrative side, you have your Microsoft 365 and your Teams and your Azure admin tools that help you manage things like security, extensibility or scalability, uh, retention, and 
just the, the overall access for the health of your entire network. Now, one other point that's worth a shout out is this bullet point here. It says send messages to people even when they're offline, even when they're offline. So because of persistent chat, we don't have to be online at the same time as everybody else in the conversation. We can pick up right where we left off. And a lot of customers love the fact that now they can connect people outside of their local time zone, right? So you can connect different regions, different shifts. You can expand your level of collaboration. So let's jump in with this key question. Why would we use um, Teams for connecting, for communication? And I'm going to show you some real world examples about chatting, calling, meetings, et cetera. And we'll introduce you to Alex to get started here. Alex is in sales. He's used to traveling for work, connecting with people outside of his network. He's been a remote user for many, many, many years, way before the pandemic. These days, maybe he's not traveling quite as much, but he's still going to be doing some traveling. And he's definitely be connecting with people outside his network. And then his main contact back inside of headquarters would be Adele. And Adele traditionally was working in the office. These days, she's doing more work from home. And she needs to be able to sync up with people who are in her local region, but also those satellite workers who are out in the field at any place and connecting and, and working with customers and being able to relay information to them as needed. So let's see how these folks can stay connected, do their work in Microsoft Teams. And I'm logged in as Adele, my alter ego here. <laughs> and in our chats, we've got a list of pinned conversations. So conversations that are most relevant, you can pin them to the top of your list. For example, you might have a one-on-one -on -one conversation with your colleagues. So here's a chat with Alex. You could have group conversations. You can even name your conversations. If you've got a group of executives or a communications team or an outreach team, maybe you've got some meetings and you want to have those, those meeting spaces set up so that you can pick up and join or jump back in as a time for the next weekly sync. And so Adele's back here with her conversation with Alex and They've been working together actually for several years. So their history goes back a long time. This is that idea of persistent chat. And the files that they've been working on, again, it's a couple of years now. So they've got quite a history. But what they've really done is they've built this space where they can quickly chat and catch up as needed. Alex can share files and so can Adele with the paperclip here icon. You can quickly open a file if you want to view it. You can work on it right from Teams. You don't have to have lots of different windows opened at one time, which makes it handy. If you want to muscle open this up in the desktop app, for example, maybe you want to work on this together at the same time, real-time collaboration, co-authoring, you can do that. Or you can take turns using tools like the commenting feature and pick up right where you left off going to go ahead and close this view and go back to our conversation. And in the conversation, you can also add features like graphics. So we've got emoji and we've got graphics that are supported by Giphy. Uh, these change every day. They're topical. You can also use stickers and memes. We had these in link and now they're back. Woo. And also, at a global level, if, if it's not appropriate for your organization to have all these graphics, these can be actually turned off. Teams can be customized at a global level. But I like the fact that they're available, especially now where a lot of people are working remotely. It's a great way to humanize the conversation. I do have several colleagues who are maybe four or five times more likely to respond if we have some graphics in the mix just to keep it engaging. Something else you may want to do, you might want to quickly just hover on a, a comment and react to it. Thumbs up is a fast way of saying, I saw the message, I got the message. And you can have some other things like, I love this, 
oh, this makes me so angry, <laughs> right? Some different ways that you can connect. You can also mention folks. You can use an at mention. You'll see how this is an at mention here. And these are different ways to send activity alerts. So not only can you chat in with people to let them know um, some questions or comments or feedback, but you can engage with them as a way to send activity alerts to help uh, pique their interest or get their attention as well. So we wanted to work on this pitch deck and maybe a good way to do that would be to extend the conversation. Let me give you a quick call. Let me call you up. You could share your audio, your video, you could share your screen, and now we could do some real-time collaboration. I can see though that Alex is not online. So I might wanna wait till he's online. I could just say, hey, give me a chat when you're back. Ping me when you're ready. And you can actually see a person's online status just by looking at their color <laughs> right there. And instead, I could even put on the calendar, I could schedule a meeting and say, hey, let's find a time. Let's use the scheduling assistant. This is the same exact tool that Outlook uses. It's based on exchange data. So we could find a time that might work well for our group, or in this case, our one-on-one. -on -one. And it could even be a recurring. Maybe we want to meet on a regular basis to do our, our huddle online, our stand-ups online. So let's go ahead and jump back into our conversation here. Something I wanted to mention is that you may be using mobile devices as a way to stay connected. So Alex, for, for example, who will be using mobile devices if he's in a ride share or if he's on his way to meet a client, maybe he's in the airport, and you can connect right from your iPad, iPhone, Android phone, and it's a very robust mobile app. You can connect with your chats, you can connect with meetings, you can access files, you can sync up with larger uh, projects as you need. Someone like Adele, who's working remotely, this could be a helpful way for her to balance work and life. So she steps away from her home office so she can help her child with some homework or a snack, but then she can still have her remote um, access, maybe through her her phone saying, oh, here's a quick message that I just got from my manager from a client so she can step back into her home office when she needs to. So the idea here with communication is that you can use private chats one-on-one -on -one or group conversations. You can pick up right where you left off. We have this persistent chat history. You can continue the conversation, search the conversation and engage with people outside of your local time zone or your shift because you don't have to be online at this exact same time. You can use features like graphics, reactions, you can mention people, you can extend the conversation with calls and calendars and meetings, et cetera, to stay engaged as well. And Teams is more than just communication. Teams is also a rich collaboration tool. So maybe you are rolling out a product or planning an event. Maybe it's a marketing department, engineering department, a sales cycle, learning and development cycle. Maybe you're getting together a group of folks. These are presenters. It's the town hall. It's the, um, the, edu the executives or the executive admins. And you want to give them a place where they can access centralized files and resources, all be in alignment. It's all about giving visibility to the big picture. So let me give you a real world example. Introduce you here to Sally, who is in marketing, and she's also the project lead for a major marketing event. So she needs access to marketing assets like branding, communication templates and guidelines. And she also needs to create a space to help her project team roll out this big event. So let's explore what this could look like. We'll move over to our teams and channels here. And Sally has a marketing team. Now, this marketing team could be set up to be available to your entire organization. It could be a public team. So everyone could have access to things like your logos, your different graphics, templates, starters, pitch decks, maybe communication features, different uh, boilerplate or plans to help roll out communication, maybe for change management, for example. Or it could also be a private team. Maybe this is just a resources for people internal with the marketing department. So you can set up public or private teams. 
And then these different channels help us focus. So Sally could create a channel called event planning. And this could be a place where she and her project team are going to be planning out the event. And she can set up a meeting. This could be a recurring meeting for planning that event. And there might even be some threaded conversations. Hey, we're going to be actually switching to a virtual venue. Let's explore that. And maybe we're going to brainstorm things like the theme and the keynote speakers and different logistics. And you can even um, reply to these threaded conversations. Your recordings, your meeting notes, they can be integrated in with the conversations, also at the top of tabs. You might have other tools that you're using like OneNote or Planner or Power BI. And again, those can be added to the, the channel to help streamline that process as well. Another item that Sally might want to do, she might just want to roll this out or spin this out into an entire team. Maybe there's a lot of moving parts with planning this particular project. Maybe it's more than just a few people. So she could even invite people that are specific for this project, give everybody visibility. Maybe even invite people outside of her network. These could be some vendors or some key clients or some community leaders. And any team can have a private channel. So this padlock here means a private channel. This would be an island of security. So it's not visible to everybody in the team. It's just for a subset of the team membership. So let's go ahead and recap a few things here. So the teams give you more muscle. They give you a little muscle and structure to help you manage an ongoing process or a project. You've got threaded conversations that can help you bring together thousands of people if you need to. It could have a, a team that's small or a team that's 10,000 people, threaded conversations, bring together multiple work streams under one visibility, one um, umbrella, giving everybody visibility to all the moving parts as needed. You can integrate your meetings, your notes, your files. Teams can have owners who can help moderate who has access to the information. You can also open up your teams to members and guests. And by default, it's collaborative, it's, it's visible, but you can also have these islands of security as needed. For example, a private channel. Now, one other element that's really important are all the apps, access to all your tools and services right from Teams. And I'm gonna give you a couple scenarios, starting here with Derek, who is an engineer and needs to share testing results with his team. So let's see how Derek would manage this. We're going to move down to our te dev and test here. So this particular team, you can think of it as a process team where they're doing product development and they've created different channels to help them with different roles and different stages in the product development process. And Derek has a code snippet channel that he set up to help him interact with his different uh, colleagues on different coding. So maybe you're using GitHub or Bitbucket and you want access to your library, your repositories right from Teams, maybe Power Apps, for example. And the plus sign allows you to access all these different apps that are at your fingertips. And actually, I want to go deeper. Let's go click on more apps and see the store. Now, your Admin, your IT admin at the global level can curate this list. So instead of seeing all the apps, you could actually see a, a short list of what's going to be relevant with, for your organization. But what I want to show you is all the possibilities. So you can see the hundreds of apps that Team supports. And someone like Eric, Derek might be saying, hey, let's go to developer and IT and let's find some apps that can help me with my coding and help me work with engineers, developers, quality assurance testers. Maybe the, the job now is to present this to the project lead or the sponsor. And so you might be using some analytics or some business intelligence like Power BI or something like MindMeister or Mural as a way to present that information. And then let's come back to our friend Sally, who is in marketing and she's a project manager. Maybe as a project manager, You'll be using tools like Planner if you've got a license for project or you're using Trello. 
you can access those tools right from Teams as well as a way to help manage that project. Or Sally's in marketing. Maybe her job here is to put this into the voice of the customer, make it a little bit more fun, engaging. So she might be using some tools to share that information. And again, tools and services that your organization is using, you can access right from Teams. And let's go ahead and recap what we're and finish up here. So these apps, they could be part of your Microsoft 365 plan or they could be Power Automate flow apps that you're creating code, low code options that can help streamline. They could be third party apps that your organization is using. Maybe they're apps that are built into the tabs. Maybe they are connectors that feed information like a Yammer news feed or a Bing news, or they might be bots that actually do some of the work on your behalf that perform a task or a reminder or help answer questions. The big idea is that as an end user, we can streamline our work process so that we can be more efficient, productive, and just basically simplify the world for us, right? And the nice thing about Teams is that it's all online. You can access this information anytime, anywhere. You can access it through different devices and platforms. There's parity across your Windows PC, your Mac, your Linux, your mobile devices, major web browsers are all supported as well as different conference rooms and other room devices. As an end user, what I like is the fact that I can switch from my Windows desktop to my iPhone and I'd, I don't have to learn something all brand new. It's the same. It's the same across platforms. And some places I need to connect through my browser and I can do that. And as an IT admin, you might like the idea that it's easier to keep all these different devices under your enterprise in alignment because of the parity that's, in, that's included. So as we're wrapping up, just a quick reminder, there are several benefits of using Microsoft Teams. Communication, it's very engaging, it's relevant. You can connect on your own schedule using the devices that are gonna work best for you or your organization. And there's a lot of robust collaboration elements, ways to streamline your collaboration, your workflows, give visibility to everyone in the process. And it's part of Microsoft 365. So using Teams is a way to leverage all of your resources and your stuff from one simple hub. So again, thank you for viewing and have a wonderful day and we'll see you next time.